What's up everybody, Venom here with a quick guide on all of the dungeons and aspects that you can collect from those dungeons in Fractured Peaks. Now there are a total of 23 dungeons in Fractured Peaks in Diablo 4, so while there are quite a few aspects to collect, we're going to go over each of those aspects, where that dungeon is located to collect that aspect, and what that aspect can do for you. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, what is an aspect in Diablo 4? Aspects are basically like a legendary power that you can manually add to gear that isn't legendary, which can modify existing abilities that you have for your class, making them more powerful or even giving you a shield when your health gets a little too low for comfort. The first dungeon we are going to start with is called Lost Archives, and this is going to give the aspect of the Protector. Now, this dungeon can be found to the southwest of the Nevesque Waypoint. Now, the aspect of the Protector makes it to where anytime you damage an elite enemy, it will grant a barrier absorbing a certain amount of damage for 10 seconds, and it can only happen every 30 seconds. So this is a defensive ability and can be put on your helmet chest armor, pants, an amulet, or your shield. It also can be used by all classes. Since this is a class-wide aspect, I definitely suggest picking it up if you haven't already. Next, we have the Defiled Catacomb, which drops the aspect of Tempering Blows. Now, this is a Barbarian-only aspect, so you have to have the Barbarian class in order to utilize it. Now, the aspect of Tempering Blows is considered a defensive enhancement, and after swapping weapons a certain amount of times, I'm pretty sure it's six, the player will gain the Fortify status. Now, Fortify is basically damage reduction, which just helps you survive longer in combat. Next up, we have the Tormented Ruins, which drops the aspect of the Unsatiated. This is a Druid-only aspect, and it is considered a resource, and after killing an enemy with Shred, your next Werewolf skill will generate 20% more spirit and deal 20% increased damage. Next up, we have the Cultist Refuge Dungeon. Now, in order to unlock this dungeon, you do have to complete the Nostrava Stronghold, but once you do, it'll unlock that dungeon for you to complete it and get the aspect. The aspect that's dropped is called the Flame Walkers aspect, and it is for sorcerer classes only. Now, the Flame Walkers aspect will make it so when you come in contact with your firewall, it will grant you 15% movement speed for 4 seconds, and this is considered a mobility aspect. Now, next up, we have the Derelict Lodge dungeon, and this will drop the aspect of Explosive Verve, which is a rogue-only aspect. This is considered a utility aspect, and your grenade skills will now count as trap skills, so whenever you arm a trap or you drop a grenade, you gain 10% increased movement speed for 3 seconds. Now, as a rogue, mobility is super important, so this is definitely one to grab if you have the rogue class. Next, we have Nostrava Deepwood. Now, this will drop the flesh rending aspect, which is a necromancer only aspect, and it is considered a resource aspect, and after Decompose spawns a corpse, you will gain a certain amount of essence. Next up, we have the Caldera Gate Dungeon, which drops the Eluding Aspect. Now, the Eluding Aspect can be used by all classes, not just one, and it is considered a Utility Aspect. Becoming injured while crowd-controlled grants you Unstoppable for 4 seconds, and this effect has a 40 second cooldown. Now, since this can be used by all classes, I definitely suggest picking it up when you get a chance. Next, we have the Mercy's Reach dungeon, which is found even higher at the tippy top of the Fractured Peaks area. This will drop the Bloodseekers aspect, and this is a Necromancer-only aspect. Now, this is considered an offensive aspect, and Blood Lance will deal 15% increased damage to its primary target per lanced enemy. Next up, we have the Forbidden City dungeon, which will drop the Night Howlers aspect. This is a Druid-only aspect, and it is considered an offensive aspect. Now, this will make Blood Howl increase your critical strike chance by 5%. In addition, Blood Howl also affects companions and players for 3 seconds. Up next, we have the Core Dragon Barracks. Now, this is also a stronghold, so you do have to complete the Core Dragon stronghold in order to unlock this dungeon. Now, this dungeon drops the aspect of Anemia, which is a barbarian-only aspect, and it is considered a utility aspect. Direct damage against bleeding enemies has up to a 31% chance to stun them for 2 seconds. So basically, this is more of just a crowd control aspect, so if you're looking to enhance your survivability, definitely go and grab this one. 
Now we have the Forsaken Quarry Dungeon, which will drop the aspect of Encircling Blades. This is a rogue-only aspect and is considered an offensive aspect. Flurry damages enemies in a circle around you and deals 8% increased damage. Now, I personally don't use Flurry myself for my build, so I didn't go and grab this one for now, but I might later if I choose to change up my build. Next, we have the Light's Watch Dungeon, which drops the aspect of Conflagration. That is for sorcerers only, and while channeling Incinerator, Rate, your burning damage is increased by 20%. This is also considered an offensive aspect. Here we have the Malwood dungeon, and this will drop the slacking aspect. This is barbarian only, and it is considered a resource aspect. You have up to a 30% chance to gain a certain amount of fury when rend deals direct damage to at least one bleeding enemy. Here we have the Black Asylum Dungeon, which drops the aspect of Torment. This is a necromancer only aspect and it is considered a resource aspect. Critical strikes with bone skills increase your essence regeneration by 20% for four seconds. That four seconds is actually pretty huge for essence regen, so definitely suggest grabbing this one if you haven't already. Next up, we have the Immortal Emanation Dungeon. Now, this will drop the Mangled aspect, which is a druid only aspect and it is considered a resource aspect. When you are struck as a werebearer, you will have a 20% chance to gain a certain amount of spirit, which also very good aspect if you haven't grabbed it already. Here we have the Hollowed Ossuary Dungeon, which drops the aspect of Unrelenting Fury. This is a barbarian only aspect and is considered a resource aspect. Killing an enemy with a core skill refunds 10% of its base fury cost. Can only happen once per skill cast. Right here, we have the Annika's Claim Dungeon. Now, in order to complete this dungeon, you also have to complete a stronghold, the Malnox Stronghold. Uh, but once you do complete that stronghold, you will be able to get the Storm Claws aspect. Now, this is for Druids only. This is considered an offensive aspect and critical strikes with Shred deal 20% of the damage dealt as lightning damage to the target and its surrounding enemies. Almost directly next to the Annika's Claim Dungeon, you will find the Rhymescar Cavern Dungeon. Now, in order to complete this dungeon, you will also have to do the same thing that you did for Annika's Claim, which would be to complete the Malnox Stronghold in order to unlock the dungeon itself. Now, once you get the dungeon unlocked, you will be able to find the Aspect of Plunging Darkness. This is a necromancer-only aspect, and it is considered an offensive aspect. Bone Prison spawns a pool of Blight that deals 50% bonus damage over 6 seconds. Now, I don't personally use Bone Prison, but if you do, this would definitely be a great utility to add to your belt. Now we're going to head a little bit north on the map to Horfrost's Demise. Now this dungeon drops the Blood Bathed aspect. This is for Necromancers only and it is considered an offensive aspect. Blood Surge's Nova echoes again after a short delay, dealing 70% less damage. Now while it deals 70% less damage than the initial Blood Surge, I use Blood Surge in my rotation. So honestly, I really, really like this aspect because even though it's not as much damage, it's still doing a little bit of damage to the enemies around you and it's free, so why not do it? We're going to head way south now to Dead Man's Dredge, which will drop the aspect of piercing coal. This is a sorcerer's only aspect. Ice shards pierce three times, dealing 25% less damage per subsequent enemy hit. Now, even though it does do less damage, again, why not use it? Because it's basically giving you free DPS. Here we have Sanguine Chapel. Now this one is an aspect for rogues only. It is the energizing aspect and it is considered a resource aspect. Damaging an elite enemy with a basic skill generates a certain amount of energy. Now I use my basic skill constantly, so I went and grabbed this one early on because I felt like it would be very helpful and it was. So if you're a rogue, I definitely suggest grabbing this aspect. Here we have the Zenith Dungeon, which drops the recharging aspect. This is a sorcerer only aspect and it is considered resource aspect. Each time Chain Lightning bounces off of you, you gain a certain amount of mana. This is nice because mana is drained constantly as a sorcerer, so I definitely recommend grabbing this if you're having a little bit of mana troubles. Last, but certainly not least, we have the Core Velar Ramparts Dungeon. Now this drops the Blast Trappers aspect. This is a rogue only aspect and it is considered an offensive aspect. 
dealing direct damage to enemies affected by your trap skills, have up to a 30% chance to make them vulnerable for three seconds. Now, I personally love this aspect because I am constantly using abilities that do more damage to vulnerable enemies with my rogue, so if you haven't grabbed this one, yet again, for a rogue, I think it's crucial to have. Well, that's it for this Fractured Peaks aspect guide. If you like the video, like the video. And if you like my content in general, then subscribe. I hope that this guide was at least a little bit helpful showing you where to go and what aspects are available in the Fractured Peaks. If you see something that I missed or if you have any kind of questions about this guide, don't hesitate to reach out to me in the comments. Thank you so much. Bye.